welcome back to The Breakdown. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make a Skyblock server, specifically for what is currently the most recent version of Minecraft. We're gonna be moving into newer plugins in this video, going over those, going over the you know plugins that you should be using in 2021 to get your Skyblock servers up and running. Uh, however, I do expect this tutorial to be pretty future-proof for at least a few even years, uh, because a lot of these plugins are very well known and are have great developer teams behind them. But nevertheless, we're gonna be going over a ton of different ones. But setting up your own Skyblock server is a lot of work. It is going to take a ton of time and a ton of configuration. So much so, we're just going to be recommending plugins in this video. We aren't going to be going in depth and configuring them. We're going to have, you know, other tutorials on the channel in the future on how to do those for individual plugins because every individual plugin listed here needs honestly a 20 or 30 minute tutorial. Nevertheless, though, we're going to give you the basics of a Skyblock server, and then you can go out and learn to configure it and do all that stuff on your own. However, if you don't have to learn all that stuff, we recommend Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, and get your server up and running. You're actually seeing us taking an Apex server that we have and changing it to Skyblock right now. Literally, it's as easy as clicking their versions drop down box, searching up Skyblock, and they have 1.16.5 Skyblock ready to go. Super easy to install, super easy to set up, and it has its own world there ready for you to use and a spawn already built. It is truthfully incredible and really, really, really well done. You can actually see us playing on it. Not only does it have Skyblock, it also has Acid Island all in one world, which is really, really cool. On top of that, it also has shop. It also has different features like crates and all of that stuff. It's even got cosmetics built right on into it. Amazing, amazing server and truthfully, great that you can get that for the price of just Apex Minecraft hosting. If you want to start a server, Apex has it set up very, very easily. It's also got custom challenges and things like that that you should check out. It's truthfully amazing. The best, like, all-in-one ready-to-go box Skyblock out there. If you don't want to have to worry about doing all the, you know, hard stuff, you just want to basically play Skyblock on a server with your friends that's not on, like, a server like Breakdown Craft, this is the way to do it, and Apex makes it easy. Then you can also go in and change things and do configurations based on Apex's setup. You also get access to their 24-hour, 7-day-a-week support, something you won't have if you're building the server yourself. So be sure to check out Apex, the first link down below, the breakdown to XYZ, if you want the easiest way possible to get a Skyblock server. However, if you do want to build a Skyblock server yourself, and you want that custom configuration, I get it, because that's what we do at Breakdown Craft, so I get wanting to do that, but if you don't, Apex is a great option, and if you do, Apex is still a great option for hosting your server on, because we do host our public Skyblock server, play our breakdowncraft.com on Apex Minecraft hosting. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump into getting Skyblock. So I've got all these downloaded. For the basics, there is a download button here on Spigot, any links that take you to Spigot. All these plugins are linked in the description down below. We also have our paper server tutorial linked in the description down below as well. Paper is the recommended server tutorial or server version that you should be using for this. Every server out there uses it. It is a great lag reduced server version and you need lag reduction on Skyblock. It is absolutely incredible and we do have our in-depth guides here as well. But nevertheless, Iridium Skyblock is the Skyblock plugin we're going to be using. This is also linked in the description down below, as are all of the other plugins we have up here at the top. There is a lot of them. There's also the Iridium Wiki in the description down below, and Iridium Skyblock is, you know, going to need some configurations. And as you can see, we have everything from getting started all the way through, you know, different inventory, schematics, all of that stuff, all the different configurations that you can do here. So, nevertheless, that is all outlined. There's even the config, which goes in-depth with every single config setting. So, that is linked in the description down below as well. We also have separate tutorials for some of these plugins. For example, Essentials X, we'd have an in-depth tutorial guide for. And to get to download Essentials X, you would go here and click the Download button. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and run through these. Iridium Skyblock is our main Skyblock plugin here. As you can see, it has different sort of features that are pretty in-depth. It has island upgrades, island boosters, island permissions, which means you can give members of islands different permissions from someone who owns the island. You can give island missions. These are going to be challenges that a lot of people are used to. You have island bank, which is basically a way for members of an island and an island owner to link stuff together. You do have island top, so you can do like, you know, top players on your islands. You can limit blocks in an island. That's important for lag reduction. And there are ore generators built into Iridium Skyblock, meaning you don't need to worry about using a third party to use ore generation. It's a really, really good Skyblock plugin, and most importantly, it's modern. It's also up to date, which is something you want to see. It's up to the current version and it has a very active developer community on their Discord. 
Moving on from there, we do have Essentials X. Essentials X is basically a plugin that allows you to add in things like slash spawn, allows you to add in different kits, different warps, different things like that. That's what Essentials X allows you to do. It is a must have and honestly, every server out there has it. Even little things like being able to do as a moderator slash spec instead of having to do slash game mode spectator is added by Essentials X. It's simple, it's easy, and it's a must have plugin. So again, we would recommend that for just slash spawn and slash warps and kits, if nothing else. Moving on from there, we do have luck perms. You will need something to manage all of those different commands added in from Essentials X, but also Iridium Skyblock and all the other plugins that are added here. Luck Perms is the permission plugin that we would recommend. We use it ourselves, and honestly, it is the most important one, or the most popular one out there, and it really is great for managing your Minecraft server permissions. Like, this video right here goes in depth with it, shows you how to use it, shows you how to set it all up, and it is absolutely incredible. Would recommend this entirely would not recommend any other permissions plugin. Moving on from there, we do have Deluxe Menus. Deluxe Menus doesn't have a video out on our channel just yet, but it is recorded and coming out very, very soon. But Deluxe Menus is a plugin that allows you to add in custom slash menus in game. So if you're ever, you know, opening up a warp GUI or you're on Breakdown Craft, opening up our rewards GUI or our island GUI on Breakdown Craft, all of that is done with Deluxe Menus. Players want GUIs these days and Deluxe Menus allows you to create your own very, very easily. Moving on from there, we have Auction house. This is what the name says, an auction house plugin, basically allowing players to list things in an auction house and, you know, buy and sell things on an auction house that way. Holographic displays allows you to add in these cool holograms in game. Basically, when you spawn into any pretty much major server, there's a hologram there telling you, you know, welcome to the server, maybe do slash rules, maybe vote, maybe do whatever, but that's all there and that's done using holographic displays. They do have different things like rainbow color and things like that that you can add in that are pretty cool. Minions are a big thing in Skyblock. Now, Ultra Minions is one that comes highly recommended to me. However, it hasn't one that I personally used. Ultra Minions is a great zero lag, as it says, custom minion plugin, giving you a bunch of different minions. Minion options. So go through the wiki on this and set up your minions. Honestly, I don't have much experience with Ultra Minions, just up front, I will tell you that, and we won't be going over it too in depth in this video, but it does come highly recommended to me. And the most important thing is it is very up to date, which is something we like to see on plugins. And they also have a Discord where you can get help. Those are the two things we like to see up to date and a Discord, and it does seem very much so worth the price. Moving on from there, we have Featherboard. This is going to be the thing when you join earlier, the Apex server had the thing on the side that was like Apex Skyblock. Breakdown Craft has a Breakdown Craft thing on the side of the screen. That's what Featherboard is. You can kind of see it here. This displays on the right-hand side of Minecraft and is common on most servers. Shop GUI Plus is, of course, the shop plugin that you would use to do slash shop in-game, and it's going to give you a cool GUI that you can view. You can customize this GUI however you want. You can literally do absolutely anything to the slash shop GUI that you want. You can, you know, add in different ores, different, you know, sections of the shop, all of that stuff. From there, we have Vault. Now, Vault is a pretty simple plugin. It allows you to have an economy on your server. You can't use slash shop without Vault. You can't use, you know, even Ultra Minions requires some economy stuff, and you can't do that without Vault. That's why it's recommended. That's why it's here. It's a must-have. Moving on from there, we have World Edit. You might be like, I don't know if I want to give players access to World Edit. Well, that's okay, but you should still probably have World Edit on your server for two reasons. One, it can help with admin and moderation and things like that. It can also help with building spawns and things like that for your, you know, players to enjoy. Whether it's, you know, allowed for players or not, that's okay, but it allows you to build those things. It is also required for World Guard, which is something you do want. World Guard allows you to protect your spawn areas, protect different things, change different world settings in Minecraft. For example, if you wanted to turn off lava, you could do that using World Guard. Stop all fire spread, you can do that using World Guard and World Guard flag. So World Guard is a must have, and it is, you know, World Edit is needed for World Guard to work effectively. So that's why you need World Edit, even if you don't want to use the features of it, you need it for World Guard. Now, those are kind of our overview of our plugins. World Guard, World Edit, Vault, Shop GUI Plus, Featherboard, Ultra Minions, Holographic Displays, Auction House, Deluxe Menus, Luck Perms, Essentials X, and Iridium Skyblock. Now, once you've got all of these downloaded, we can actually go ahead and minimize our browser, and I already have them installed on a Skyblock server here. This is a 1.16.5 paper server. As we can see here, we do have all of the plugins installed right there, but the server hasn't been ran yet, so we don't have any config files. So if we go ahead and double click on the run.bat, it's gonna launch it on up. If you're hosting on like an Apex server or something like that, start your server, all of that, and then the config files will all start generating in here, and there is going to be a lot of them. Just heads up, there's going to be a lot of different config files, a lot of different things that you need to look through and configure, and that is what's so great about us having these tutorials 
for some of these, for example, like deluxe menus here, an in-depth tutorial, like, you know, luck perms here, an in-depth tutorial on how to set up permissions, how to handle all that, and even different stuff with essentials, for example, and how to do all of that. So it's all covered in those in-depth tutorials. We're just showing you kind of the basics of this, and we are going to be jumping in-game and, uh, you know, looking at these a little bit more, specifically getting to your Skyblock Island. I'm also going to go over how Skyblock is structured a little bit, but as you can see, we are generating all these config files. If you click on Iridium, for example, you can come in here and change everything from your different block values to your normal configurations.yml to different inventories, missions, all of that stuff. Missions is basically the same thing as Island Challenges. There's Island Shops. You can add schematics, and these are going to be your different island, you know, that you can start off with. As you can see, there are some ones by default, but if you want to add in your own custom islands, you can do that. It's all there. It's all configurable, and what's great is it's all listed in the description down below on the Iridium, you know, basically wiki here, or, the, you know, the Iridium, like, I don't know. Yeah, wiki. It's a wiki. Anyway, on this Iridium wiki, which is linked in the description down below, and you can come here and go through this wiki to kind of get everything up and running and set up, but nevertheless, I would recommend honestly going through all the config files on all of these different, you know, plugins to configure them and set them up. For example, shops, GUI Plus, you can come in here and set up your shops and all of that. So anyway, we are going to go ahead and join this server real quick, and I'm going to show you in-game what this kind of looks like. But overall, there are hundreds of different plugins that you can add to a Minecraft server. I mean, literally hundreds of them. It's overwhelming how many you can get. And... Because of that, I can't go over all of them. This is the basic, this is, or the, not the basic, but this is the intro, the basic plugins that you need for a Skyblock server. And this will get you most of the way there. If it's just for you and a few of your friends, start with these. And then if your friends are like, hey, can we add this feature? Go ahead and say, yeah, and then go find the plugin for that and add it. But these right here should get you started kind of from the basic and, you know, the base and starter of it, and then kind of expand from there. At least that's what I would recommend doing. Um, we are going to take a little look at the Skyblock files once this is loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and just get Minecraft open, and then we're going to go ahead, show you Skyblock in game, show you a few of the Skyblock config files, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be done. We went over the basics of starting a Skyblock server. All right, so here we are. Minecraft is open. We can jump into multiplayer and join our local host here. Going to take us right on in game. And then once we're in game, we can see over here on the left-hand side, we've got kind of basically essentials coming up, Radium Skyblock, all of that stuff is pulling up. And most importantly, this is Skyblock, right? So if we go ahead and do slash island, it's going to open up a, a very basic schematic selection. Which one do you want? The desert, the jungle, or the mushroom? We'll go ahead and do desert. And it's going to go ahead and create our island and take us to the island. Basically, some of the features that you would expect are uh, pretty standard right now when you do slash island it's going to open up an island menu and, and basically kind of go through all this stuff now you can see you can do island boosters by default there are different ones in here this is honestly a decent scab block setup without even you know changing anything but um yeah as you can see there are different island generator upgrades and all of that stuff it's really really good and a really really good scab block setup which is why we are recommending it here for 1.16.5 however i do want to go ahead and say that uh you can configure this even more and i'm going to jump into the convict files just really quickly so if we go ahead and come back over here into our server plugin area we can go into the iridium skyblock config here and once we're in here we have all these different items now i'm not going to be going through all of these you should click on them and go through them all yourself but i want to show you the configuration.yml as well as you know different stuff for example the upgrades is kind of interesting so if we go ahead and do the upgrades as well now this is using adam this is my text editor of choice you can use any one that you want honestly doesn't really matter. But as you can see, this is the uh, configuration.yml file, and you can do the different stuff. So you can see the prefix, and the prefix, what it's talking about is the Iridium Skyblock there. And it's really cool how that's a gradient. Honestly, looks pretty good. Uh, island title created, so basically it gives you all the different stuff you can change there. All the different abbreviations, for example, for thousand, million, billion, all of that. You know, the default island is public. Do you want people to be able to join islands? Like anyone to come to an island by fault you can turn that on or off and all that different stuff there's a few different settings in here now upgrades i do want to look at because it's a bit different so as you can see size upgrades what the first one is and then we have ore upgrades and how all that works and you can control what ores are in your like basically ore generators right here there is nether ores as well which is really cool and then we also have the warps upgrade and how many warps you want someone to be able to create to their island and how all of that is handled but as you can see first off we have size and how big you want the island to be as you can see size upgrades do 50 100 150 about a but you can change any and all of these values and you'll find that kind of across all of these different config files for example if you go into missions here you'll find that there are default missions for example for like sugarcane and you know different uh hunter for example killing zombies, skeletons, creepers, all of that stuff. And there are tons of different ones in here, even brewing these different potions. I mean, tons of default challenges, but you can go through there and edit those and make them better. But you can see them in game if you do slash island and then come in here to the challenges, which I have to find island missions. And then these the daily missions and the quests. Here are the different quests, as you can see. And then there are the daily missions as well. 
So we can come in here and you can complete these every single day. So it's cool stuff. And uh, honestly, one of the best Skylock plans out there. That's why we wanted to recommend it. And it is for 1.16.5. If we do slash version here, you will see we are on Spigot 1.16.5, even though we are on a bit of an outdated version, we are still on one. But uh, that's the basics of making a Skyblock server. You can take it further if you would like, or you can take it less far if you would like, basically. It's up to you how far you want to take making a Skyblock server. You can either put a ton more time into it, or you can just leave it as default and just start having fun, and there you go. That's kind of that. So that is 100% up to you. But nevertheless, we do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single day of the week. It really does help us out. And if you want to see more stuff on plugin configuration and all of that, we do have a ton of additional videos in the description down below as well as linked to the at the top of your screen and in the links in the description down below as, you know, in all of the plugins that we have featured here. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I am out. Peace.